The obituary of the order has been written so many times. We only receive bad press. We're trying to portray a different image altogether. Jesus, he's our God, he's our saviour. I think it's the only organisation that is actually speaking out on behalf of promising people. I'm not going to be the whipping boys any longer. For the first time, the Orange Order has allowed cameras inside the lodge during a year that has changed the face of Scottish politics forever. Can they defend the union against the growing power of nationalism? And can the Grand Master persuade the wider world that the Orange Lodge is nothing to be scared of? Most worthy Grand Master, most worthy Grand Mistress, distinguished top table guests, brothers, sisters and friends, let us pray. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we ask thy blessing on our coming together on this special evening in our orange calendar. Ian Wilson is the most worthy Grand Master of the Orange Order Scotland. In November of last year, he agreed to allow BBC cameras access to the Orange Lodge. It is Ian Wilson's self-appointed mission to change the way the Order is perceived. Most people's um, only encounter with the Order tends to be the, uh, the public parades. Most people don't know enough about the Order. I think it's very much in my interest to throw the doors open and to uh, draw a little light through the, the dusty corridors. It's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to our Grand Lodge Awards dinner for 2006. It seems to have acquired a new nickname, the Orange Oscars. <laughs> um, and why not? Because um, what this evening is all about uh, is a celebration of excellence. I keep being told, much to my irritation, that I am not a typical orangeman. I mean, define a typical orangeman. There are hundreds and hundreds of people like me in the lodge. Uh, but we're not the guys that, that seem to be, that seem to hit the headlines, because bad news makes news, unfortunately. So yes, there, there is, uh, there is the, the, the bigot handle. And unfortunately, I think uh, it's, it's going to take um, um, a fair amount of effort to, to probably not get rid of it altogether, but certainly to reduce it and to get it into proper sense of proportion. His task is a difficult one, because the distrust between media and members of the Lodge is mutual. We're seen and portrayed by the media and by uh, the Scottish executive that we're nothing but a shower of drunken bigots. Complete and utter rubbish. See, what, what we're looking at is a, is a media that's controlled, I think, in this country, in the United Kingdom as a whole. Lodge 178, the rising sons of Carson, are from Pumferston in West Lothian and they're in contention for the category of Lodge of the Year. It's the most hotly contested of all tonight's awards. Yeah, it was fully sealed. I've no idea what's inside. Lodge of the Year 2006. The Rising Sons of Carson. We are the people. We are the people. God's people. God's people. The story of the prize-winning Sons of Carson, who take their name from a leading turn-of-the-century loyalist, is one of an extraordinary recovery. Two years ago, there were only four members left. Now there are 44. <laughs> Formal lodge meetings convene once a month. Informal gatherings are far more frequent. We've got social problems in Scotland, we've got education problems in Scotland, and we want a voice, we want to be heard, and the young people of today are no longer willing to accept what's going on in Scotland, and that's, that's, that's why young people are flocking to, to join this organisation, because we're sick and tired of fed up with people coming out of this country, money left, right and centre for the state. We, we always seem like second class citizens these days, and it's no fair. But we should also remember the thousands, millions of British uh, servicemen and women who all all hues, all colours, all religions that fought and died to keep that flag oh. flying. Yeah, it's unfortunate uh, it's been hijacked. Yes, it's been hijacked by political parties for their own end, or so-called political parties. Fascists, that's what I call them. We are the people! 
Signs of recovery are everywhere. The Grand Master is in Irvine to attend the reopening of a lodge, Scotland's oldest, that was largely destroyed by fire last year. This is the standard image of the Orangeman, on parade beneath King Billy's banner. It's the orange walks that generate the Order's press coverage, always negative. The media doesn't they cover he, our uh, undoubted he, commitment to, to, to charity never will he receive a column inch in the tabloids. Therefore, we seek to get publicity for our cause and our beliefs through he, holding public demonstrations. The Orange Walk celebrates the end of the threat of a Roman Catholic monarchy. In the glorious revolution of 1688, the legitimate king, James II, was ousted from the throne. He had become openly Catholic, unwilling to share power with his Protestant subjects, and Parliament turned for help to William of Orange, Protestant leader of the Dutch Republic, whose final victory was secured in 1690 at the Battle of the Boyne in Ireland. At the end of the day, we wouldn't deviate from the view that we are opposed to the Roman Catholic Church because we feel that the Roman Catholic Church is inimical to the best interests of East Scotland. Um, if that makes us anti-Catholic, then so be it. But we're in no way anti-Catholic in terms of opposing Roman Catholics as individuals. That's nonsense. In 1795, tension in County Antrim between Catholic Irishmen and Protestants of Scots descent led to both sides forming militias. This was the beginning of the Orange Order. Three years later, in 1798, the first Scottish Lodge was founded. We're very close to Northern Ireland, uh, both in terms of geography and in bloodlines, and particularly with the plantation of Ulster when the Scots went across to Northern Ireland in, in great numbers. Uh, there was particularly a, an affinity between the Scots and the Northern Irish, and that, that has persisted to this day. What we've had to guard against is this uh, growth in loyalist paramilitarism and to the extent in which it has infected the order because there's no, there's no doubt that it has. Certainly within the Lodge, as far as paramilitary activity is concerned, if anybody is found to be bent on that kind of activity, he's out in his ear. The order will not stand for it. We have, in fact, expelled members over the years. How many? Oh, jeepers, difficult for me to put a, a figure on. I would have thought, um, certainly not hundreds, but um, scores. There are people that we would rather didn't come near Orange Parades. The Buckfast Brigade, as we would call them, the particularly young people who are fired up through alcohol and are causing problems. But that isn't unique to the Orange Order. I mean, you just have to go to any football matches any Saturday in any big city and you will see the same sort of behaviour. Eternal and everlasting God, with gratitude we praise thee for the heroic life and devoted service of thy servant, King William III. Upon this loyal order, which be thy servant... I came into the order uh, for religious reasons. Faith is important to me. I'm an elder of the church. But the order is a peculiar amalgam. It's also very much loyalist with a small L, uh, very much queen and country. In Scotland, the union to which the order is devoted is under threat. Already there are signs that in the impending election the SNP might do very well. And in the UK as a whole, the order increasingly feels that its devotion to Britishness has been kidnapped. I wish you every blessing. You can you tell us straightforwardly there's a difference between the kind of po politics of the Orange Order and the BNP, just as you have? Yes. The BNP is a fascist organisation. Um, fascism is almost peculiarly a Roman Catholic phenomenon. Let's he be perfectly... Hitler was a Roman Catholic, Mussolini was a Roman Catholic, Salazar was a, a, a Roman Catholic, Franco was a Roman Catholic, De Valera, another fascist, was a Roman Catholic. Tell me, I mean, if people can tell me how many uh, Protestant fascists there were, I would be pleased to hear about it. <laughs> it's my very great privilege, and I thank you for this privilege, to unveil this plaque and declare Irvine Orange Hall is once again back in business.